Simpsorama. One year after the then most recent series finale of Futurama aired, Bart Simpson's time capsule shenanigans lead Bender to come back in time on a vital mission. To kill Homer Simpson! <gasps> My ears are burning. Not yet, but they will be. <laughs> ah, a boxing glove! But when this mission doesn't work, the rest of the Planet Express crew go back in time to modern day Springfield to get to the bottom of things, and then the Simpsons have to come to the future. <laughs> Dad, we have beer in our time. Hey, I haven't had a drink in a thousand years! Now, technically, this is not the first Simpsons Futurama crossover. There have been multiple Futurama cameos in Simpsons stuff. Bender made a cameo in the Flash Forward episode Future Drama, which may or may not have been canon. And Bender and Zoidberg make very fourth Wally cameos in the 2007 Simpsons game as part of the Matt Groening boss fight. Violet, engage the super tuned defense systems. Yes, Mr. Groening. It's graining. Are you sure? No. But the big crossover long before this were the comic books, which, like I said, I never followed super closely, but I skimmed through the Simpsons Futurama crossovers, and I noted that the writers of those bent over backwards to justify how they could share a universe when The Simpsons was established as a fictional show within the Futurama universe. Some Bart Simpson dolls! <laughs> Shorts. Okay. Mmm, shorts. Which seems like an odd thing to worry about because The Simpsons is a fictional show within the Simpsons universe. If you start building a balloon for every flash in a pan cartoon character, you turn the parade into a farce. But for this episode, which is theoretically actually canon with both shows, they don't bother with that. Futurama is just set in the future of the Simpsons world. It's possible that the appearance of Kang and Kodos at the end is supposed to hint that this is a non-canonical episode, but the more likely scenario is they just remember that they've always worked off the mantra of following continuity only when that's funnier than ignoring it. Time machines are physical impossibilities. We teleported through a singularity that I quantum entangled to Bender under the guise of fixing his collar. Yes, but how did Bender get here? With a time machine. But you just said that- Sample's ready! And that disregard for continuity is great for comedy, less great for emotion. Since Fry is reduced to a supporting character in this story, he never gets a moment to revel in the fact that he's back in the 21st century. And he never even considers trying to see his family, which, I mean, fine, but after Game of Tones, it feels inauthentic for him to not even think about trying to see his mom again. Also, this is a cruel gut punch. That's just heartless. Also, I guess for this episode, Springfield is within walking distance of New York City. Not any wilder than any other clue about Springfield's location they've ever given. Ohio, Nevada, Maine, and Kentucky. But the point here is just to have one last wacky adventure with the Planet Express gang viewed through the lens of the Simpsons gang. It's like a reverse backdoor pilot, a backdoor reunion. It doesn't really advance the Futurama storylines or characters that much, other than apparently leaving Scruffy without a head, but it's nice to see them all again. Kill all humans. Kill all humans. Stabby Flanders. Starbucks Flanders. While touted as a Simpsons Futurama crossover, this episode is really more of a Bender and Homer crossover with cameos from everyone else. Hello, Robert. Looks like everyone gets a turn to say something. This concludes my turn. And unsurprisingly, this episode goes hard on the meta jokes. You know, they look a little similar. Yeah, like the guy who designed Bender just took a drawing of Dad and stuck an antenna on it. See, I used to think that too before we actually saw Bender in human form. Take Homer and explore this time period. Find out why people would ever pay for freemium games. I'm assuming this was a little meta joke about how both of these shows have their own freemium games, since elsewhere this episode makes one of the very few references I remember The Simpsons ever making to one of their other famous advertising campaigns. Attention goblins! Madison Cube Garden is filled with Butterfinger bars, and people are laying fingers all over them! <laughs> Also, you know I appreciate this joke. I thought people in the future would be more full of peace and love. Like in Epcot 
Epcot Center. In our time, Epcot Center is a work farm for the weak. Oh, but it's not as crowded as the slave labor camps at Universal Studios. This is a pretty good Simpsons and Futurama episode, and it's nice to see everyone again. But I don't think the episode has quite enough fun with the crossover to really justify its existence as a crossover. I feel like this easily could have been fleshed out into an hour-long episode, really giving the character interactions room to breathe. And to make matters worse, the episode was overshadowed by the Simpsons Family Guy crossover, which aired earlier that season and stretched about a half hour worth of crossover into an hour. Come on, Fox, there's plenty of chances for Family Guy to visit Springfield, but how many more chances are we going to get to visit the world of Futurama? Well, apparently more than we realized, but come on! 